So, in the previous two lectures we talked about uh, linear momentum and linear momentum is a very important physical quantity and the law of conservation of linear momentum is one of the pillars very strong pillars of uh, our formulation of uh, physics. But then the way we generally define it p equal to m times v mass times velocity this quantity mass times velocity does not remain conserved even if there are no interaction no forces external forces on the system and therefore we need to redefine this uh, linear momentum so that uh, we can still use that uh, conservation ideas and the things which de which are derived from them and as we had seen that uh, if we define a quantity if you have a particle of mass m and then uh, it goes with a velocity let us say v so velocity is v and then we define a quantity p which is mass times velocity and then divided by square root of 1 minus square of this uh, speed square v square by c square if we define a quantity like this then uh, this quantity is uh, conserved in collisions and situations where no external forces act and this can act as a linear momentum. Now, this uh, redefinition of linear momentum dependence on velocity in this particular fashion is it works very well in all conditions and therefore, we stick to it, but then uh, people are somehow tuned towards that uh, old definition p equal to mv and they want to preserve that. So, there are two ways of, of doing that right. So, one is that okay, there are three ways one is that you accept that momentum is not defined mass into velocity momentum is defined as mass times velocity and then divided by this factor. So, this is one way. But then uh, if you want to stick to no no p is equal to m v one way is that the mass of the particle give another uh, symbol to it and then uh, construct a mathematical quantity which is this. So, let us uh, change our symbol mass of the particle let us write it as m naught and then this quantity this whole quantity this much we we name it m and then we say that it is m v. So, p equal to m v right. So, this is our old very familiar beloved equation. So, we can still say that okay, linear momentum is mass times velocity, but the mass is this mass is, is different from the mass of the particle as we know as it is written in the textbooks mass of the electron is 9.1 into 10 power minus 31 kg proton mass this much, neutron mass this much, mass of a helium nucleus this much. So, that mass is a property of the particle just like a particle has a particular charge. Similarly, a particle has a particular mass, electron has a particular charge, electron has a particular mass. E by m ratio has played a very crucial role in development of all this modern physics you know that. So, mass is uh, something which is a property of the particle and then if the particle moves with a speed v then you construct this mathematical quantity which depends on, on what speed particle is moving and call you will have to give a different name this is not mass. So, you will you will have to give a different name and that name given is so, this is m this m is m naught divided by square root 1 minus v square by c square and this is called relativistic mass. So, I am uh, very uh, clear about it and I want to convey this that this relativistic mass is a mathematical construct 
it is a quantity that we have constructed mass of the particle is here and this is a quantity that we have constructed and we have given it a different name it is relativistic mass. So, if I say just mass I will be referring to mass of the particle okay. to give any kind of uh, to avoid any kind of confusion this is also given a different name and that is called the rest mass. Right. In this if I put v equal to 0 m is equal to m naught. So, if the particle is at rest then its relativistic mass is the actual true mass of the particle. Right. So, if the particle is at rest that time its relativistic mass and uh, its mass they are same. So, in that uh, fashion treat this as rest mass and this as relativistic mass. In this equation in this equation if I replace this uh, rest mass or the mass of the particle by this relativistic mass this equation works well, but it is very limited use not always. For example, we have force is equal to mass times acceleration. Now, if you think that okay, I will use relativistic mass and that f equal to mv will just work just like this p equal to mv is working with relativistic mass it does not, it does not. So, okay, this, uh, this is a good quantity, this is a fine quantity and it uh, does have some significance also, but nevertheless do not give it uh, status of mass of the particle. So, that is my request. So, this is one way. Another way, there is another way, we can still work with only one mass which is the intrinsic property of that particle and then uh, we can still preserve this if we say that in this equation what we will do is p is equal to mass of the particle times velocity divided by square root of 1 minus v square by c square and this quantity this quantity we rename. Another mathematical construct this is one mathematical construct and this is another mathematical construct we this was uh, mass and this was given a name relativistic mass this is velocity and then velocity divided by square root 1 minus v square by c square we give a another name we call it proper velocity. So, we call it proper velocity proper velocity I will just tell why it is called proper and given a symbol generally this eta. So, eta is is actual velocity divided by square root 1 minus v square by c square. So, you can absorb this factor with the mass or you can absorb this factor with the velocity. If you absorb this factor with the velocity and say that we will be using proper velocity then also you have the same relation p is equal to mass times velocity. So, this is another way to preserve our definition linear momentum is mass times velocity, but this velocity is not the ordinary velocity this velocity is something different and it is called proper velocity. Now, let us see what this uh, velocity is and is there any meaning physical meaning of this proper velocity. So, how do we define velocity? How do we define velocity? Let me take uh, symbol u for the velocity of the particle because we will be talking of uh, changing from one frame to other frame Lorentz transformation and the frame velocity we had been using uh, that uh, small v all our Lorentz transformations are written in terms of that small v. So, for the particle velocity let me use the symbol u. Okay. So, how do we define u x, x component of the velocity of the particle? This is d x d t and that means, what I do is I take two events particle is here at x y z at this location and at this time t and then as uh, time elapses a very short time interval t plus d t the particle reaches somewhere else. So, this is t plus d t time and the particle is at x plus d x y plus d y 
and then z plus dz. Proper calculus language uh, should be used. Uh, we, I, we can write this sum at delta x and then delta x tending to 0, etc. But essentially, essentially, this is what the physics is. At time t, the particle is at x, y, z. At time t plus dt, the particle is at x plus dx, y plus dy, z plus dz. And then we say that this dx change in the x coordinate divided by this dt is this ux. Of course, you have to take limits and all that. So, you have two different events, one event, another event and then take this dt and take this dx and that gives you ux. Similarly, uy and uz. Similarly, uy is this dy, this dy by dt and then uz is this dz by dt. What is eta x? Look at here. What is eta x? Eta x is u x divided by square root 1 minus u square by c square. Right? Particle speed here and velocity here x component. So, x component. So, it is this. So, this is equal to dx dt. u x is dx dt and then square root 1 minus u square by c square. Now, look at these two events. These two events are occurring at two different positions in this frame. In whatever frame we are using, the frame in which the particle is moving with velocity u, in that frame, in that frame we are talking and this event occurred here and that event occurred somewhere else. So, these are two events occurring at different positions and the time interval between these two events is dt which is not the proper time interval. What is the proper time interval between uh, these two events? You remember? What is the pro if you change frame, this time interval will change. So, if uh, you can find a frame in which the two events occur at the same place, the time interval between these two events in that frame is called proper time interval and which is the shortest of all such time intervals. So, if I say that this is in frame S, this whole picture is from S frame and we go to some other frame. which is moving in x direction with velocity u x ok, moving with respect to s with a velocity say u x or u in fact, u in fact. The particle is moving with velocity u and my frame is also moving with velocity u. So, actually I have gone to the particle frame. Okay. Locally at that instant I have gone to the particle frame and in that frame the particle is at rest. The two events still occur, but then uh, the other all clocks etcetera are moving and at the same position of the particle I am measuring the in time interval between these two events and proper time that will be the proper time interval and the proper time interval dta will be shortest remember. So, dt in this time in, in this frame it is dt and times what uh, what what is the velocity of the frame in which the events are occurring at the same position that velocity is here and so 1 minus u square by c square. So, this is the proper time interval between these two events and this quantity is here. So, this is dx by d tau. So, this so called proper velocity x component is dx divided by length divided uh, this uh, distance covered divided by time that is the definition of velocity. So, distance covered is here and time is here, but which time? The time in the particles frame 
okay in the particle frame some time has elapsed and then some other clock is coming here so that is the proper time interval and that is why this velocity is called proper velocity but remember this is a mathematical construct because what we are doing is dx we are measuring in frame s this is measured in frame s and dto we are not measuring in frame s this we are me measuring in the frame of the particle okay so time interval we are measuring in a different frame the separation in the space we are measuring in some other frame and then we are dividing this length by this time to get some kind of velocity so this is also a mathematical construct so this is known as a proper velocity and in this terms p is equal to m naught into eta that linear momentum is mass times velocity that that definition can still be used if I use this kind of velocity. So, one is uh, mass you redefine uh, or you, you define a new kind of mass call it uh, relativistic mass uh, relativistic mass and the other approach is that you define a different kind of velocity and then you use that same definition. So, that is about the these things. Now, this proper velocity that we have defined has a a very good uh, use in uh, theory of relativity because you can construct a velocity four vector or four velocity. Now, remember any vector that transforms according to that c t x y z right if in a frame there is some event at x y z at time t and if you write c t x y z that transforms according to the Lorentz transformation and we call it four position or position four vector. Okay. So, if this is position four vector and then at t plus dt, so this t plus dt and x becomes x plus dx, y becomes y plus dy and z becomes z plus dz. This is also a four vector, it is a position of the particle, right? it is position of the particle at a given time t. So, when we construct this, these uh, four components, this is uh, your time temporal component and this is your spatial component and we, we combine all these four together, this becomes a position four vector at time t. Then uh, position is changing time is changing correspondingly position is changing and therefore, at time t plus dt you have this as the position four vector. So, this is a four vector, this is a four vector and this transforms according to Lorentz transformation if I change the frame then I know that time is different, x is different, y is different, z is different and then uh, the Lorentz transformation will relate the two. Similarly, here this also at this time also you have position you have time and you can do a Lorentz transformation and therefore, if you subtract what you get is c times dt and then dx and then dy and then dz. Okay? So, this is also a four vector two four vectors two vectors you add them you subtract them do not multiply okay? or do a linear combination that also is a four vector. So, this is also a four vector. Now, I multiply everything by a constant, then also it will remain a four vector, just a constant. So, if you do the Lorentz transformation that constant is you are just carrying that other things are all same. So, if you multiply this four vector by a constant quantity all the four components you still get a four vector. So, let me multiply it by 1 by d tau. There is a proper time interval between these two events. At time t, the particle is x, y, z, one event. At time t plus d t, the particle is at this position, another event. What is the proper 
time interval between these two events that is d tau ok in whatever frame you are working from initially proper time interval is the proper time interval it is the time interval measured in the particles frame right so if i multiply everything by 1 by d tau what i get is c dt over d tau this is one then dx over d tau this is another dy upon d tau this is another and dz upon d tau that is another this is a four vector and this quantity is c times dt by d tau what is dt by d tau this is d tau dt by d tau is dt by d tau is dt by dt 1 minus 1 minus u square by c square. So, it is 1 by square root 1 minus u square by c square which you can write gamma u. Let me write it u to remind that uh, it is not the frame velocity with which we are talking all these things. This is the particle velocity in the frame in which I am working. In one particular frame, I am working. In that particular frame, the particle is moving with velocity v or u. And uh, with that corresponding u, I have this quantity 1 by square root 1 minus u square by c square. If I change frame, if I change from s to s prime, some s prime, the velocity of the particle will change. If the velocity of the particle changes, the speed of the particle changes, then this gamma will also change. So, this will have different values in different frames. So, let me just put this u here to remind that the speed of the particle is u here. So, this is c into gamma times u and this quantity is eta x, this quantity is eta y and this quantity is eta z. This is a 4 vector. So, if I write it in a proper column form, this will be like this. It is c times gamma u and then uh, eta x and eta y and eta z. This is a 4 vector. This is a 4 vector. It will transform like the c t x y z. The same Lorentz transformation will be used. And this is known as this, uh, this vector is known as 4 velocity or velocity 4 vector. Okay. If all this is written from say frame S, if I go to frame S prime, what will happen? you will have different values of all these things. So, let me put it prime here, prime here, prime here and prime here, prime here. Here also prime. I am writing all these things from S prime frame. In S prime frame, the particle velocity is not u, it is some u prime. And therefore, you have uh, u prime here. Uh, when you are constructing this quantity, you will put u prime here, S prime frame. From S prime frame, I am writing all these things. And this will be equal to the Lorentz transformation matrix. Remember, gamma minus beta gamma 0 0 and minus beta gamma gamma 0 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 0 1. This is your Lorentz transformation matrix and then here you write the quantities in S frame. So, it is C times gamma u and then you have eta x, eta y and eta z. So, this will be the transformation of this uh, 4 velocity, velocity 4 vector when you go from s to s prime. In s you have these quantities and in s prime you have these quantities, these components. So, you can uh, immediately write what is eta y prime. Okay. You remember for this transformation, you have if you write this as c t prime x prime y prime z prime and then that Lorentz transformation matrix and here c t and x y z, you very well know 
that this quantity, this third component, 0, 1, 2, this 0th component, first component, second component, this y prime is equal to y and this z prime is equal to z. Same story, 0th component, first component, second component, third component. So, eta y prime will be equal to eta y. The y component of proper velocity remains unchanged if frame s prime is moving with respect to s in x direction. Uh, similarly, here eta z prime will be eta z. And of course, you can always write uh, the transformation for this and transformation for this. You know how to write transformation equations for this. Same exactly the same transformations will be here. So, that is the meaning of being a four velocity. It, uh, it, it transforms just like uh, uh, the, the this position for vector using the same Lorentz transformation equations. So, that is why it is this. I will uh, pick up one more four vector before I, I close this. Let me make some space. So, this uh, velocity four vector is here. Now, you multiply all the components of this velocity four vector by the mass of the particle. And remember, when I say mass of the particle, it is mass of the particle. It is the intrinsic property of the particle, which people call rest mass also. I also, I will also call it rest mass. But uh, to re-emphasize, when I am saying mass, it is the mass. So, multiply this four vector, you have this four, velo four velocity, sometimes it is called four velocity and sometimes it is called velocity four vector. And that is uh, your components are c times gamma u and let me write in column form only eta x, eta y and eta z, this is it. This is a 4 vector, velocity 4 vector, this is velocity 4 vector. Multiply it by the mass of the particle, so that you put a m naught here, m naught here, m naught here and m naught here. Right? All components multiplied by the same constant quantity and therefore, this is also a 4 vector, it has to be 4 vector. It will also transform according to the Lorentz transformation when you go from s to s prime. Now, remember what is this? What is this? m naught times proper velocity, this is linear momentum x component this is linear momentum y component, this is linear momentum z component. So, you have uh, m naught c gamma u and then p x p y p z. So, your linear momentum x y z components of linear momentum are part of a 4 vector, okay, spatial part of the 4 vector. This 0th component is called temporal part and this these 3 components are called spatial part. So, the linear momentum if I define it in this way uh, this m naught times v divided by square root 1 minus v square by c square if the particle velocity is v. If I define it that way this is also a 4 part of 4 vector and this is called 4 momentum. or momentum 4 vector ok. So, whatever is the speed of the particle correspondingly you construct this gamma u and then the first component is mass of the particle, rest mass of the particle times c times that gamma u then your p x p y p z. If you want to write this uh, in terms of ordinary velocity that also you can do, you remember how to write it, that will be m naught c times gamma u here and what is eta x? Eta x is gamma u times v x, okay. so v x or u x times this gamma u, this is m naught and then u y times gamma u, this is m naught u z times gamma u. 
So this is how we had defined our eta x, eta y, eta z. Remember eta, eta and velocity they are related by uh, if, uh, if it is u then u divided by square root 1 minus u square by c square and s is gamma u this u here and then the velocity u. So that is how we have defined proper velocity. So if this proper velocity you can write in terms of ordinary velocity then the, the, it comes like this. So this uh, is our four momentum vector. Okay? These three quantities you know px, py, p z these are the momentum components. What is this? What is this quantity? that we will talk in the next lecture.